Hello everybody, it's Dio here from Firmware Fair Gaming, bringing you another Bellrite video. They are busy at work here, making tons of updates to the preview branch, which is probably just days away or a week or so from hitting the live, based on how things have been going, is my prediction. But uh, anyways, let's take a look at what they've been working on and what will be coming our way. So what have they brought our way? So if we look at our population tab here, they added in that we can see our presets from right here. And we can also go and when we go in and edit them, for example, they also added in that they have a backpack slot that was previously not available. So they have added that in. That is awesome. So that solves that problem. They also tweaked some of our armor. So for the tech tree, just let's see here, some of the armor, they had went and increased some of the strength needed to be able to wear said armors. And so they have tweaked that a little bit, making it a little bit easier for us to get into the more advanced armors once we hit tier three. This will also help out our companions as we want them to be able to wear this stuff as well. So by lowering that, everybody wins. They have also improved our AI to maintain better formations while we are fighting. So before, while fighting, they would kind of get all spread out. So the fact that they are going to stick closer together is going to help us keep the front line enabled because they ended up uh, splitting off and then it gets surrounded. And when you're surrounded, it is pretty hard to survive. Apparently, I ran out of armor for one person. That is pretty funny. Now, one of the biggest things that I think they have done with all the changes is they have basically made it so that we can customize our game for whatever sandwich we like. So if we just go into our game settings here, and this is actually pretty phenomenal, I think. We have our ability to change this to whatever we want. We can en enable raids. We can enable them on outposts, or we can disable those if we want. We can increase the frequency from low to uh, high. We also have the strength from easy to high. And or actually, it's impossible. Sorry about that. Same with the reclamation parties. We have their frequency as low, low to high. And then they added in these. I mean, some of that was already existing. But they also added in multiple threats at once. So you could be raided simultaneously. You have the banded migration. You can turn that off. And then they added in all these uh, additional features for like food spoilage, hunger, so you can really decrease how long it takes for your person to get hungry. So we decrease that, and they get hungry 40% uh, faster. You know, 100% was normal, so I guess 40% of that, so I guess 60% slower, something like that. Not going to worry about the actual mathematics. And then they also added in where we can increase our learning speed for our skills, so we can get the max levels quicker as well as that'll impact our companions so that's awesome you can fluctuate your melee and range damage depending on what you want to do as well weapon skill requirements armor skill requirements so you can turn that off so even though they reduce the armor requirements and some of it you're like no i want to have like strength one and be able to wear full plate you can do that so they have basically made this so that we can do whatever we want like this is pretty Amazing. Oh, equipment breaking speed. I just noticed that. We can turn that all the way down. So you can't quite get it to zero, but I mean, that is pretty phenomenal. So you can basically set up this game to whatever custom experience you want, which is sweet. They also did it where before you would change some of these settings and it would impact all of your saves and then you'd have to change it back and forth depending on what you're doing. If that's if you had like one where you want to just do impossible mode, another one where you just wanted to take it easy and just build stuff, you had to change it as you switch back and forth. But with this and the changes that they've done, it is unique to the save, so you don't have to do that. So you can have one save just called impossible mode, tackle that, have another one just as free build, have it set to the lowest settings and do it that way, and you don't have to fluctuate. I love this because that is what I actually do. So as you can see, I had a lot of this set to easy or disabled because when I'm recording the videos, I don't want to have to be worried about a raid coming. So I have one set for that and then I have another one. Then when I want to actually play it, have to change it and all that sort of thing. So this is very, very sweet. 
So they have made a ton of other improvements as well to the game. Like we can just look here, they've got like three or four quick updates, from the and this is a list of all of them. Like it just goes on and on. So that is pretty phenomenal. But I'm just going to pick out a few of the ones that I find the most impactful and just go over them with you. So the first thing I want to touch on is that they have finally allowed us to make town people's clothing, villager clothing. So I know that was out there for a lot of people. They're like, I want one of my people are gathering or working to actually look like peasants. And you weren't able to do that because they only had the clothes that they came with. And if you got rid of that or whatever, you could change their appearance. So our wishes have been answered and it is finally available to us. It is crafted from the Weaver's Hut, so you do have to reach Tier 2 in order to make the Villager's Clothing. They did add in that the default gear set for a Villager will be none, so they don't automatically equip stuff without a player's action, because that was happening and that was a little bit frustrating. So now we have to manually do something for them to equip anything, otherwise they will just run around naked. They have also added in a priority system for when it comes to arrows, bows, and the arrow speed and shields for their durability. That when your followers go to gear up, they will factor that in when they are picking up their items. They have also improved when we are giving them orders. They have improved uh, <laughs> just their acknowledgements, so as you can hear them running around. Before, you could kind of give them an order and they wouldn't shout sometimes if you gave them too many orders in subsequent in succession. So now they have improved that, so you always get acknowledgement that they heard you. So rather than me just run around and pull various screenshots so you can see what I'm talking about, I'm just going to straight out tell you some of the other things that they, they, they have done. They fixed the hit detection for several weapons, so that was a little bit frustrating. I can think of a couple in general where the Morningstar and other weapons you'd think you'd be able to hit, but it just wouldn't register. They added up a pop-up notification when you level up a skill. So now you, before it was just in the bottom left, but now it's quite obvious, so that is sweet. They also added another pop-up for when you recruit a villager. They improved the raid and recreation party pop-up, so now they also added in the name of the settlement when it's getting raided. And it is actually a pretty sweet looking thing that they put up on screen. So props to them, like it, it looks very, very sick. Uh, this one is one of my favorites for I play a lot of co-op. You can now see how much damage you actually do in co-op before only the host could see their damage numbers. Now as a guest, you can as well. They fixed the patrols that would be nearby a camp when you cleared it out. In the past, they would just run away and then you have to chase after them. And now they will no longer do that. They also fixed an issue where marksmen were getting confused on which arrow to use if they had multiple... Um, oh, there we go. There's a good example of the effect of it leveling up. So from 9 to 10, so that was pretty sweet. And it looked pretty slick. Uh, so the, as I said, they were, marksmen were getting confused when with which arrow to use, so they fixed that. They added some gameplay customization to the character creation screen, so that helps us set that up from the get-go. They also made the gear presets available from the start. As I mentioned, they added settlement names to raid and reclamation notifications, so you didn't have to guess. They also updated icons for the party notifications. They added notifications for when you won in Crush Rebellions. In some cases, the NPCs were fighting too passively when holding positions, so they have changed that, so now they will be much better fighters. And they also had companions were shielding their shields in combat when receiving a new order, thus rendering themselves kind of defenseless. So they have fixed that. And this one could be a pain in the butt if it was happening to you. Luckily, I didn't have this happen to me. But sometimes players and companions were not able to deal damage when fighting the brigand prison guards. So all in all, these are some great improvements. They're constantly making this game better. I still put in a fair amount of hours every single week into this. I have a Sunday night crew that we play on Twitch, so we put about five or six hours in there. And I still play on my own, even though I'm still now branching into other games. I just thoroughly enjoy this game 
and each improvement they make just keeps making it better and better. I, like I said at the start of the video, I feel like this will be pushed to the live branch in about a week, which will be pretty sweet for everybody to enjoy. And I, I can't stop saying I keep looking forward to what they come out with next. So anyhow, that brings me to the end of the video. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. Let me know what you think about the improvements that they've been having and what is missing that you still want to see. I'm curious to hear about that. Anyways, as always, I appreciate you like, share, and subscribe. So please click those videos. Sorry, click those buttons. And until next time, I hope you're enjoying Bell Rate, and we'll see you in the next video.